Hi everyone, Jeff here and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about this the article that the Miami Herald had put out called House of Cards. They just launched this last week on December 30th, the day before New Year's Eve, which is probably why many of you might have missed it and not seen it. So uh, this article is filled with a lot of great on-screen graphics and animation and all that. So I want to go through this article with you and compare their root cause analysis with mine and show you some differences in the timeline that they had been investigating. Now, they had sent me a note on the 30th when they released this, you know, to alert me about this, but I had already coincidentally seen it, and a few of us had already been discussing it on the forum. So, so after the collapse, the Miami Herald had already assembled a team to investigate this, and they had already included a bunch of engineers. So, so over the six months or so since then, they've been working on these animations and floor plans and, and analyzing everything to determine what they think went wrong. So, so in this video, we want to just compare the differences between what they're saying and what I'm saying. Now, I'm going to put a link to this interactive story down below for you so you can see it. I don't want to steal all of their thunder, and you should um, actually scroll through it and, and watch their entire presentation. It's actually quite good. I highly recommend you scroll through their interactive story because for those of you who like things simple and like to have you know nice drawings presented for you in the animation and all that, this will be great for you. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Herald wins some type of a, a award for this for investigative reporting. Yeah, so they did a great job showing renditions of the building and also identifying all of the columns and everything throughout the the garage structure. And they even accurately depicted, like I mentioned to you, probably I think on the very first video I put up after the collapse, uh, I noticed that some of these columns were wider than the other ones like over here. And that was one of the first questions I had. So I'm glad that they accurately showed that. And they showed how some of them here, the green ones were, were wider because they were 24 by 24 inch. And then they also showed the ones that were skinnier scattered around in the, in the garage. And as you can see, some of them were under the pool deck where it would not be so much of a problem if they were that skinny or spindly. But some of the other ones under the building, even if, even though they were slightly thicker and beefed up, when you have columns that were that are that thin, you're just asking for trouble, in my opinion. And not only that, like, let's say you have a 12 by 12 column or a 12 by 24 column. In my opinion, having a 12 by 24 doesn't really buy you much because the column is only as strong as its smallest dimension. So a 12 inch by 24 inch column, for example, or a 12 inch by 16 inch column, in my opinion, is still a 12 inch column in the right direction if you have the shearing forces or the load collapsing in the right direction. Okay, so the engineers that the Herald hired to analyze the floor plans also built out this plan. You can see all of these white lines showing all of the beams. And we've studied all of these before. We've showed you all of this in the floor plans before. And so what was cool here is not only did they identify all of the beams, and here's my H-beam, my controversial H-beam that I talked about with that mystery column um, that we found coming out of the floor over here. And this proves that I was correct in showing where it was. I had a number of people that left comments on my video from back in October if you remember where I talked about this mystery column growing out of the floor here, right next to the H-beam. And people were telling me that I didn't have the H-beam in the right place. And it is. It's, it's right here as designed in the floor plan, right along the southern border of the building. And it didn't move when it fell. It just, it can't, people were telling me, oh, I was wrong. It shifted up a cell when it fell or it shifted over a cell or people told me I was over this way. So you can go back and watch that video. I'll put a link to it down below for you. And But this proves here that I had it called out in the right place. So one of the things that the Herald identified, which is an interesting topic that I want to bring up for you, they identified beams like this here that were in the original plan as submitted by the developer to the city of Surfside, but yet inexplicably they were removed. These were left out of the final drawings that went to the contractor. So normally when buildings are designed and built, you will see just what we saw here. The city of Surfside released these floor plans that you see here that were submitted to them for approval. Just because you see these floor plans, this does not mean this is how the building was built. You often end up with what's called the submitted floor plan. We call these the as designed floor plan. And then you end up with another set of floor plans that is actually given to the contractor to actually build the building for you. Don't ever think that those two are going to be exactly the same. There could be minor changes made from the as designed to the as built. And then making things worse, folks, is not only do you have the as built floor plans, but then you have changes that can happen on the fly on site 
when the contractor realizes, oh, this isn't right, we need more rebar here or we need less rebar here in order to be able to get the aggregate concrete to fit in there between all of the rebars or other stupid things happen like we did not have enough rebar delivered today. All right, let's go to lunch and when we come back, maybe it'll be here. And then they come back and maybe they pour concrete and they forget to put the rebar in. So there's so many things that can go wrong on the site in so many ways that the building can be built outside of the floor plan. Yeah, so here's an example. If you're looking at a floor plan and it says here, I'm supposed to build 16 of these number five rebars going across this connection to the column. And then in this direction, I'm supposed to build 17 of them. And then in the space in between columns here, I'm supposed to insert 14 of these number four rods going across. But how do you know for sure that was done? I mean, look, as complex as these are, humans make mistakes or they get lazy or maybe not enough rebar was delivered or the cost of rebar suddenly rose up and they're like, you know what, maybe I don't need to put in 16. Maybe I'm only going to put in 10. You know, these kinds of things happen all the time. So the engineers that the Herald had hired to analyze everything, they were under the impression that from day one, there was already problems with cracks developing around the columns here near the pool deck. And But they said that they, these were latent issues that you couldn't see because, you know, the rebar, if it's stretched and everything, it's all inside the concrete. So you're not going to see it. Now, if you recall back in August, Josh over at the building integrity channel he performed an analysis of loading on the pool deck around the columns and he was shocked to find that the loading based on his calculations was already at about 100 percent, which it should never be you should always have plenty of room especially on a pool deck for things like dynamic loads what if there's going to be parties with people on there what if you have to bring on like little forklifts and stuff and other type of uh, equipment to, to do things like when they brought in all the pallets of the bricks i'm sure they used little forklifts to drive around on here. My money is on the fact that over the years when they came in and added the, those other layers of sand and the paver bricks and I spoke to family members of owners of units in here who have told me that the pool deck always flooded whenever it rained. So that means water sat there and probably ate its way into the concrete all the time, just constantly. And you remember in my earlier videos from July, I kept getting suspicious as to why all of these MLS photos from the real estate state agent listings, puddles of water on the deck on a crystal clear day where there was nothing going on. Also, the Miami Herald is going to show you uh, things like this, how you'd have some uh, minor deflection in the, the slab, which could have also can lead to punching shear as well. And they also pointed out that over the years, you know, numerous different contractors that came in would put new layers of stuff on top without necessarily removing the old layers. And of course, as we mentioned in July in one of our other videos, how they came in later and added these palm trees. And it was documented that the palm trees later had issues with the roots growing into the pipe system. See that? And so it caused the the pipe system to, to burst and have leaks and crack. And so in 2017, as we showed you in a later video, they had to come in and remove all of these palm trees out of the pool deck. See, as you scroll through their interactive article, make sure you check out their, their animations that clearly show where there was weak rebar and some of these connection places between the slab and the columns. So here you had thin spindly columns that weren't helped at all by the fact that you had not enough rebar um, covering these areas here. You needed some anti-punching shear rebar protection. And in some cases they're saying it just simply wasn't there. The Herald also pointed out about this wall that went around the perimeter and that it added uh, lateral stability to the entire pool deck. And I believe that part of the lawsuit from some of the owner's families is going to be concentrated on this connection here between the wall and hey maybe was it bad to begin with was it weakened by the pounding next door here when they were building the 87 park condo right here on the left Part of their animation was pretty good. It shows how the cars come down the, the ramp and that it was right underneath Sarah Nair's apartment. And it shows a lot of animation on their timeline that they created here showing who went where and where they were talking and all that. So make sure you focus on that because that's key importance of showing who survived, when, and how they survived. I mean, before we just gave you a timeline like back in July and said this person left the building at whatever time. But here you're actually seeing it in motion of who left and when, how they barely got out with their lives. So here Here's the first difference, I think. So the Herald starts their timeline at 1 a.m., which is 22 minutes before the building collapsed. I think the real timeline, as you can see in my video, the real timeline actually started 36 hours before the collapse of the condo. 
So if you remember back on July 2nd, uh, one of my earlier videos on this topic here, where I said, here's the cause of the Miami condo collapse. Look at this incredible postcard view. This is why people flocked to this building. Let's form the timeline starting 36 hours before the collapse. And what happened was a pool contractor came in to take pictures to give a quote for... See, so here's where all of the newspapers that day, this is like two days after the collapse, they were showing these photos that the, the pool contractor took 36 hours before now just outside the pool equipment room inside the garage the pool contractor said that he noticed some water puddling on the floor there around space number 78 but he failed to get any pictures of it because it wasn't part of his task i bet he's kicking himself for that now but note where the water is it's right at the bottom of the entrance ramp into the garage from the street and one other thing missing out of their timeline for the miami herald is why didn't they mention like i've mentioned before is that so 14 hours before the condo collapsed the city of Surfside's inspector was actually on the roof. Under investigation. McGinnis also stressing he saw no warning signs at an emergency town commission meeting. There was no inordinate amount of equipment or materials or anything on the roof that caught my building official's eye that would make me alarming as to as to this place collapsing. And here to me is a very vital clue that I think the Miami Herald left out on their timeline was this. I mean, this was all over the news. This was next day after the collapse. Like this man here said, his mom heard creaking noises coming from the condo the day before it collapsed. See, right here, he was saying, she told me she had woken up at three or four in the morning and had heard creaking noises, which you should never hear in a concrete building. So it, it was just reported by numerous outlets. Uh, so I think this was an important milestone on the timeline that probably should not have been left out of the story because it shows there was some type of warning going on. The building was speaking to people. People. And it was saying, hey, something's wrong here. That the day before, people are hearing noises in the building loud enough to wake them up. And while the Miami Herald's timeline started at 1 a.m., about 22 minutes before the collapse, they didn't even mention that Sarah Nair's daughter heard noises at 11 p.m. So there's a lot more to this timeline, folks. And they mentioned that the fire alarm was triggered. Now, as we pointed out in our video here back in August, so we did this video here on the 911 calls. Now, this next phone call came in about 10 seconds after the previous call came into 911, and this is from one of those alarm monitoring companies. Thursday, June 24, 2021, 0, 1, 16 and 39 seconds. Miami Day, please. Hello, this is Central Alarm Control. We're calling in a fire alarm for business. The address is 8777 Collins Avenue. 8777 <laughs> Collins Avenue. Yes. What kind of alarm did you say? Uh, fire alarm. What's the name of your account? It is Champlain Towers South. Something triggered the fire alarm. Now, was it dust getting picked up by a smoke alarm somewhere? Or was it when the pool deck collapsed, did it tear through one of the pipes? And, you know, we saw that falling water from the tourist video looking down into the garage from across the street. So we know that the sprinkler pipes apparently it looked like they were compromised. So sometimes these can trigger alarms as well. But are they always going to be audible alarms when you just have a loss of pressure in the line? That we don't know. Now, interesting, here's another area where we differ from the Miami Herald version, because they even said here they compared the column visible here with the tourist video. Here's the vantage point the tourist had shooting down. They did not mention that this third column right here is the one that is missing in the pile of rubble. So some people are still debating whether the column was missing. I think it is. And as you folks know, I proved it for sure that this column right here was missing in my video. So here's that video that we shot and we're going to show you how I did that overlay. Oh, and here comes a car out now. Now look real closely, you can see all the way to the back. But in this video, I was able to overlay the columns here on the North Tower with the columns taken from the tourist video. Well, let's go take a look at that. What I did here was I took the screenshot from the tourist video and identified where all four of the columns are supposed to go. And I labeled them. How do we know that I'm accurate? How do we know these are in the correct place? Well, because I know where three of them are, but the third one is the one that I claim is missing. Okay, so what I do here now is I have this video overlay from the screenshot of my video that I shot on the third. Now watch this, as it morphs in, you see that? All four of these columns line up. 
right? So that's how we know we're supposed to have that third column, right? So coming back to the overlay, you can see I can keep going back and forth between the two, proving it. A lot of people have been saying, oh, there's no there's no column there, there shouldn't be one. But look at the spacing between them, and yeah, it is. Yeah. So that's why I was surprised that the Herald did not point that out, because that is such an important fact to know. This proves that this was the first column to buckle. There's no other evidence that shows that any other column fell first once that pool deck collapsed. And it makes perfect sense, too, because if the pool deck and the planter sits right on top of this column, so everything was already weakened in this area, it makes perfect sense that the beam likely rotated, pulled this way by the collapsing pool deck, which probably crumbled this column when the pool deck collapsed. See, so here's how they're showing the pool deck collapsed here. And here's our... And here is our column right here, right in the middle of that planter. See right here? It's just outside the border of the building by 20 feet. And, and you know, remember, all of this happened in the course of about seven minutes anyway. And it was all underneath Sarah Nur's condo. Yeah. And then they showed, of course, in, in apartment 611, Ileana Montegudo saw cracks forming in her wall. So she hightailed it out of there. She noticed it. So it, it seems like anybody that was in the building that survived, we've got a few of them that are in this 11 stack. That's what we call it. All of these you know, unit 111, 211, all the way up. So you remember over the summer, I showed you this ring camera video that was shot from 711. Okay, so the Miami Herald's engineers tended to focus now on the slab from the pool deck and where it meets the rear wall there on the south, bordering that 87 park condominium next door would be right over here. Yeah, so they then analyzed the slab to the wall connection there. So here they were able to show all of the steel that was visible and how it all just looks like it broke and then, of course, they show the planters collapsing down into the garage. And this is that whole area of the pool deck that Morabito wanted to redo, wanted to strip everything down and redo the, the concrete there and re and, uh, re-slope it down and add more drains. And they were basically going to just make everything really nice again here. And here's where those missing beams were, would have been had the builder built these in place. And of course, since the columns here were just very narrow because they were outside the building, they had no problem poking through the concrete slab of the pool deck. And we've showed you on other videos during the summer, all of these columns here were left standing and perfectly vertical too, pretty much. I didn't see really any, any change in them. So it showed that these didn't collapse. Rather, the pool deck just did a punching shear straight down these columns, and the columns stayed put. So here's another key difference of what they're saying compared to what I was assuming happened. So they're showing here that like the rotation of this support beam along the edge of the building caused all of these columns to buckle here. And ironically, they even mentioned the fitness center here as a a starting point, which is interesting because I had mentioned that also. So they were showing it as starting up here against the shear wall in the fitness center. And ironically, I had showed that also over the summer in one of my other videos. If you remember this video right here on July 13th, where here you'll see I brought up the subject of the fitness center and could it have had anything to do with it? Because it's right over here. You see here it is in the architect's original drawings. So the fitness center sits right over the driveway that's directly in front of spaces 81, 82, 83, 84. Remember that magical space number 82? Okay, so here's a look inside the fitness center, and here's the window, so you know that it's right on that southern edge of the building there. It's right up against the windows. These machines, I'm not so concerned about, but look at this machine that's got to have, like, I don't know how many stacks of weights they have here, probably two or three of them. That's got to be a lot, plus the incredible heavy weight of these machines as well, and then all of these weights <clears> that are over here here in the wall in the in the room there so that would certainly have me worried when it's sitting on top of a compromised concrete slab so now when you come back and look it, boy it's, it's no small coincidence in my opinion that that fitness center happens to be so you can see great minds think alike and it didn't take long for both me and them to come to a similar conclusion in this area yeah, so they think that it just collapsed like that. Although I still think the collapse actually started over here. Because when you look at the security camera videos, I think it looks like the center of the building falls first. So I think that it started more over this way. Now, if you haven't seen any of the previous videos that I've uploaded here on the channel showing different topics of the video collapse and trying to come up with root causes, make sure you come here and look under our heading here for engineering disasters, collapses, and construction fails, and you'll see the entire playlist there. And you could just binge watch to get caught up to speed here. So thank you so much for joining us today, folks, and we'll see all of you on the next video.